Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India this course design of fixed wing UAV. So, we consider air flow which is nothing but ordered motion of this air and we have represented the flow by means of this ordered motion by means of this straight lines called streamlines. Right. So, what are these streamlines by definition we can say it is the path traced by the fluid element to which tangent at any point represents the direction of velocity vector. So, what does it mean? Let us say if I draw the part is by the fluid element in this particular fashion then say at this particular point consider a fluid element a small fluid element here let let its position be here and then if you draw a tangent to this so at this particular point the velocity the di direction of the velocity of this fluid element is horizontal almost horizontal along this particular line so if you look at at this particular point it is the tangent is more or less in this particular direction to this curve so, this gives you the direction of velocity of this fluid element that is it is going forward and downward right. So, at this particular position it is going up say this this is the tangent here. So, this is the velocity direction of this velocity vector. So, if we consider a fluid element here. So, this gives the tangent here gives the corresponding direction of this particular yeah, fluid element here. The streamline itself is the tangent here. So, the direction of velocity vector is along this particular lines. So, let it be V infinity. What we considered is we consider. So, in our previous class to find out velocity is, is we, uh, we, we considered a steady streamline flow and say let A be the point in the free stream which is far ahead to this particular sensor right. So, this particular sensor or this particular measuring unit we call it as pitot tube and there is a static tube around this pitot tube from which we measure the static pressure. Let P s be the static pressure. Say this static pressure is measured by means of holes on the periphery here. We made this tube to interact with the free stream by means of these holes and this total pressure is measured by means of this pitot tube. Let P not be the total pressure measured here. So, the incoming fluid element which is at point A have this free stream conditions with the pressure P infinity velocity V infinity is brought to rest isentropically. Say this particular fluid element is brought to rest isentropically at point B called the stagnation point and the corresponding pressure is P naught and the velocity at this particular point is 0. So, from here we are already we are able to deduce using Bernoulli equation what we deduced is P in P naught minus P infinity upon half rho infinity where rho infinity is the density. So, if you know the differential pressure and the corresponding density we will be able to figure out what is velocity here right. 
pressure and density and temperature as a function of altitude. So, from which we have derived this gradient layer equations and isothermal layer equations where P2 upon P1 in a gradient layer is equals to T2 upon T1 raised to the power of minus G naught by A R right. and rho 2 upon rho 1 is equals to T2 upon T1 raised to the power of minus G naught upon A R minus 1 where A is called the A is called lapse rate dt upon dh which is kelvin upon kilometer. So, and also we have come up with isothermal layer equations where there are constant temperature zones in which we assume the temperature is almost remained constant in, in that particular layer. So, for those part, so for any two points in that particular isothermal layer, we can relate using this two equations e raised to the power of minus g naught by r t times delta h with delta h is equals to h 2 minus h 1 and r is equals to 287 joule per kg kelvin for air. So, we have used this two equation and solved one example problem where we want to find the velocity of the aircraft at 12 kilometers altitude where we are able to measure the total pressure is that what it is given right. So, and we have solved using uh, the geopotential altitude. So, let us now look at what happens when we create a pressure difference. So, we have ambient conditions here like the atmospheric conditions here. Let us assume we create a sudden pressure difference. Can you give one such example? Let us consider a fan. When you switch on the fan, what happens immediately? You start feeling the wind, right? Some stream of air. That is because the fan is creating some pressure difference here. Let us assume this is one such disc called an actuator disc. Let us say this is called actuator disc. So, this is called actuator disc which is capable of creating pressure difference. Let us say this is the upper surface or let us say to the right pressure to the left left and this is pressure on the right side. If I take this is my left and this is my right. So, I will I label them as pressure on left and right. So, this actuator disc let us assume the thickness is thickness is minimal or very small and let A be the cross sectional area of this disc. Let capital A be the cross section area or area of this disc simply area of disc right. So, what happens when there is a pressure difference here what exactly the fan does it will try to draw air from back side and it used to throw air at us is not it. So, but let us assume seeing it is trying to this particular disc is trying to draw the air from ahead of it and try to throw it behind it right. So, in fan it is a reverse case right it will draw air from behind and throw it ahead. So, it is it is a reverse case here and so let us now first look at at far ahead let us say if I if I start if I uh, place a fan here. So, somebody who is sitting at 100 meters from here is he going to feel any difference because of this right. So, definitely no most likely no with the ordinary fan that we generally use. So, let us say at far ahead. So, let us say this is this particular uh, at far ahead we uh, this uh, this disc which we call it as an upstream of this disc. What we have is the atmospheric conditions which is P infinity is one atmosphere here. Let us say this is station 1 that I am considering at far downstream of this 
say again, if I stand behind 100 meters of this fan, do I feel that any difference because of it? So, let us say this is my station 2, which is again at atmospheric pressure conditions, P infinity is equals to P atmospheric, right? Here, one at, which is one atmosphere here. What we can read there is static pressure, right? So, but here at some distance, this has come close to P at P infinity, which is uh, atmospheric pressure here, and then, yeah, so far ahead, I do not, so the velocity is 0, right? and these two particular lines represents the boundary conditions of this, or nothing but the stream, stream lines, which are on the boundary or the circumference of the stream tube. What is stream tube? If we have a bunch of these stream lines together, then we can con consider it as stream tube. Right? So, at station 1, I have P naught, uh, P infinity and V is 0 and at station 2, this disk is inducing certain velocity to this flow. So, which is nothing but V i here. Let V i be the induced velo uh, velocity induced to the flow because of this disk. Right? And let V 2 be the velocity at the station 2 where pressure is equals to P infinity and then let A 2 be the corresponding area, this particular stream tube, cross sectional area of this stream, stream tube here, right. So, for this A to be 0, this, this has to be infinite, close to 0 let us say, this has to be the area here of this stream tube be, stream tube to be very high, right. So, so now, Let us look at, so what we know is about the pressure here, right. So, let us see how the pressure is varying here. So, if this is the location of the disk, right. So, what what is happening initially say, this is my static pressure or P infinity which is atmospheric pressure. So, it drops as we go close to this disk, is not it? Let us say. this is the location of this disk, right. So, at this particular location, so it drops, the pressure drops, let it P u, the upper surface, so sorry, the lift pressure to the left of this disk is dropped, right. And then there is a sudden increase, why? Because here the, there is an induced velocity here, is not it? What is happening? The, see, see, in this particular portion, there is no addition of energy, is not it? So, according to Bernoulli, what happens? If the pressure from static condition, it is now converted to the pressure, sta some static pressure plus dynamic pressure here, is not it? Because the flow is set into motion here and it is moving, so almost close to this disk, it is ahead of disk, let us consider, it is moving at a velocity v i and we consider it is thin. Right. So, this velocity remains constant across this particular section here, right. Why? Because the area of the disk is very minimal here. So, according to continuity equation, this velocity remains constant across this particular disk. So, what is happening? We are imparting some additional energy, right. This is, this energy increases the pressure here, right. And then it so, the nature will take take care of the rest once you have increased the pressure here. So, now the air or the fluid which is at high pressure tries to accelerate so that the pressure become is the pressure the raised pressure becomes equal to the ambient conditions. Right? So, here so it is trying to get back to this. So, let this be P on right side pressure, which there is a discontinuity here, right. Now, let us see what happens to the velocity. So, we know that
so let's say this is this is the initial velocity or say it is at rest now so this is v infinity so this is at rest at point, at station 1 say this is my uh, station 1 this is the disk and this is my station 2 so what happens here the velocity increase to vi and we don't know what's happening after that isn't it that we'll see so the pressure there is a sudden increase in pressure because of this disk and this pressure needs to be equal to the ambient condition after after certain distance like a down a downstream of this disk right in the slipstream if you then the slipstream has to in the slipstream this particular air has to if the pressure has to drop right then it has to accelerate am i correct or not within this particular portion again there is no addition of energy only at this disk there is an addition of energy here so within this particular portion we can still apply this bernoulli's principle so p plus half rho v square is constant so if p has to drop down dynamic pressure has to increase right so let's see will it follow the or not we'll derive that so the velocity increases so what do you think is the variation of total pressure so till disk it is p not is constant and at this at the disk there is a addition in p not right there is an addition in pressure because of this particular disk This is the total pressure here. Fine. So let's uh, now look at the mathematics. So again, we are trying to look at what the pressure difference does to a to this particular disk, right? So what's happening here? The air is pushed back by this propeller disk, and according to Newton's third law, so the air will also push, right? How it is pushing this disk? will be in the opposite direction right so what that push must be equal to so there is a force because of this pressure difference across this particular disk right so what is the pressure difference p on right minus p on left times the cross sectional area of this disk or the area of the disk is it not this is the force with which the air is pushing this disk forward so let us say this particular force is known as t which is thrust where T is the thrust acting on the disc, right? For example, if I rigidly hold this disc, rotating disc, I will also experience the same force T, right? If it is more than my frictional force, right, isn't it? So then I will try to move in that particular direction. So T is thrust here, right? So let's say this is our equation number. A six seventeen. A fifteen. A fifteen. Sure. A one five. Yeah. A one five. This is our equation A one five. And so what's happening here? So there is a force that is generated here, right? Isn't it? Because of the flowing mass of air. Am I correct or not? So this mass of air is entering this stream tube at a velocity v naught, right, and leaving this stream tube at a velocity v two. That means there is a change in momentum. This change in momentum is what is going to create this force. Am I, am I correct or not? This can also be related by this. So m dot at station one times velocity at one minus r s m dot at station 2 right so this mass flow rate is due to this disk rotating disk isn't it so this disk is what creating that mass flow rate so what is that value mass flow rate is equals to rho a v right m dot times sorry v2 minus v1 let us say so what is v2 
So, V at velo velocity at 2 minus 0, right. Let V2 be the velocity at this particular location. So, okay, second station, this is V2 at station, this is at V1. Am I correct? Okay. Let 0 be the velocity with which this mass is entering this particular stream tube. What we have is rho A. So, the mass flow rate is due to this disk. So, at this disk we you can have rho A V dot. Rho A V is the mass flow rate m dot, where A is the area of the disk, V A is the velocity induced in the disk times this velocity V2, right. This is the thrust generated because of this mass flow rate, right, a change in momentum, right. So, now equations A15 and A16 represents one and the same, the same thrust that is being generated, am I correct? Now, let us also look at what is, so what, so I can't, let me just note it down. So, what we have is P plus half rho V square is equals to constant, right, along a streamline here. Okay. Now, let us let us look at this mass conservation here. So, it should be rho A V i should be equals to rho A A 2 V 2, right, which is equals to A V i is equals to A 2 V 2, where V V 2 is the velocity measured when P is equals to P infinity here static pressure equals to P infinity. Okay. Now, let us apply Bernoulli's equation ahead of the disk and behind the disk, because here there is an addition of energy, which we cannot use, because of which we cannot use this Bernoulli equation throughout this. Right? We can use it in this section 1 or section 1 is given. So, part A, section A and section B. Right. What we have here is P infinity, which is the static pressure and the velocity here is 0, right, is equals to the velocity to the left side of this disk, which is P L just immediate to the disk and then and the corresponding dynamic pressure is due to the velocity, induced velocity V i, right. So, okay. So, uh, similarly, if you apply this Bernoulli's equation to the part B, right. so from A, from B what we have is P r plus half rho V i square is equals to P infinity plus half rho V infinity square, sorry V 2 square. Okay. okay. So, just remember this A 15 and A 16, we will call back these equations. So, using these two equations, what we have is, subtracting these two, this, this A equation from A, from equation from from equation B, right. So, what I have is P R minus P L is equals to P R minus P L is equals to half rho V 2 square. Let us say this is my equation 18, A 18. Now, comparing this equation 18 and then previous 15 and 16, what we can write is the thrust generated here or so T is equals to P, uh, P left minus P or uh, say P right minus P left right. What was there? 
P right minus P left times the area, isn't it? Which is equals to? Which one? This one. this one is A70. Okay. Yeah. So, PR minus PL times A is equals to rho A VI times rho A VI times V2. Right? Using 16 and 17. So, using 18, what I have is so, V i is equals to or say V 2 is equals to 2 times of V i. So, using equations A 15, A 16 and A 18, right? Am I correct or not? Okay, so, so V2 is twice the induced velocity here. That means the flow is accelerating here, right? And what, what will be the cross section area A2 here? So, using this, this particular A17, we can relate using A17, what we have is, so A2 is equals to Two A upon two. So half the cross section area of the half the area of the disc. So so area of this cross section area of this twin tube is half the area of this disc. That is why it is accelerating, right? So yeah. So let this be A nineteen and A twenty. clear? So, we can also uh, express this induced velocity in terms of uh, this thrust loading. That is also a good, good equation to note it down. So, from this 15 and 16 again using, so using equation 16, using equation A 16, what I have is T is equals to uh, v2 two, two rho a v i square, right? Since v2 is 2 v i. So, this implies, so the corresponding induced velocity depends upon root over t by a, right? So, this particular factor t by a is known as thrust loading. So, what is the amount of force generated across this particular area, area of this disc, right, is known as thrust loading, right, which is Newton upon meter square. Yes, yeah, too many equations, yes, I can understand, but still we have to note it down. So, V i here is the induced velocity by this disc depends upon this particular thrust loading factor, right. And how much power we need to spend in the first case, right. How much power we need to spend in order to create so much thrust. So, uh, is it clear? My, is my question clear? So, that means if this disc is generating thrust T, that means this disc is also pushing the air with the same force but in the opposite direction, right? And it is pushing that air at a velocity V i, is not it? So, the power induced or the power that we need to put in is equals to power induced is equals to thrust times V i, right? Am I correct or not? The force times the velocity. So, what are the units of this power? Which is watts. In watts. So, this equation be A 22, right? Fine. So, that means in order to generate a thrust T, I need to produce this much of pressure difference, right, across a 
disk of cross section area A. And if I produce this much of thrust or this much of pressure difference, it creates a velocity at a downstream where the pressure equals to P infinity, right. So, it create it induces a velocity of twice that of induced velocity, right. It create it accelerates the flow at this particular velocity, fine. So, it is worth noting down non dimensional analysis or non dimensional parameters for this particular actuator disk theory. Right. So, with which we will be able to compare propellers of various con configurations. Okay. So, so what we are dealing with is Frotz momentum theory or actuator disk theory. Right. So, that is what we are discussing here. So, we know now this thrust will propel your aircraft. So, will take your aircraft forward. Right. Given if it overcomes the resisting forces, isn't it? So, this is the main idea. So, thrust is this is this is how we can generate thrust. This is one of the means with uh, in which we can generate T to accelerate our aircraft. Uh, now, let us look at some non dimensional parameters. So, if I had to compare uh, propellers of different dimensions and different uh, uh, geometric characteristics, right. If I have to compare them with uh, uh, to bring them onto a single platform for comparison, I need certain non dimensional parameters, right. So, let us first look at, so one important factor that we look at is the induced velocity here, right. Let us define a non dimensional induced velocity which is lambda i is equals to V i upon V t, where V t is the tip velocity velocity at the tip of this disk, right. So, V keeps varying, am I correct or not? Induced velocity keep varying along the, along the disk. So, so, V t remains constant for a given propeller, okay. Not at a particular RPM again. Okay. And then let us define C t is so, non dimensional induced velocity So, lambda I keep varying along the radius of the disk right as we progress towards the tip this keep lambda I keep varying ok. Whereas, V t remains constant for this particular RPM. So, similarly, let us now define thrust coefficient. Which is C t is equals to T upon dynamic pressure right times the area of the disk. So, dynamic pressure times the area will help you to like this is force force upon force helps you to non dimensionalize this thrust right. So, this V is nothing but again here is the tip velocity here fine, where C t is called non dimensional thrust which is the thrust coefficient here right. And now can we rewrite this equation? So, can we look at this equation? So, what is V i? So, V i is equals to 1 upon 2 rho right. So, so let me do this, let me rewrite this equation. So, root over T upon rho A times 1 upon root 2. So, what I can do this with this is, this is like C T by 2 V T square, is not it? root over C t by 2 which is 4 times V t square. Right. So, this equals to lambda i root of root over C t upon 2 or C t is 4 lambda i square. Right.
23 where is other other equation so let this be 24 and this be 25 right so can we also convert this so similarly you can do this so let's say cpi is defined as pi upon half row vt cube times area right similarly you can relate them so you can substitute this in this particular equation and then for t again you can convert in terms of coefficient ct you'll be able to arrive at this particular non dimensional pressure coefficient cp okay cp is or pressure coefficient which is a non dimensional number just pressure induced pressure pressure coefficient so this is the amount of power that you need to sorry sorry it's not pressure coefficient power coefficient i'm sorry cp is a induced power coefficient which is pi upon half rho vt cube times corresponding cross area of the disk so cp is cpi is a power coefficient which is the induced power coefficient so you need to spend so much of power in order to throw the air at this particular velocity with the thrust 3 backward here right so what we can observe here pressure difference across a disc created a force called thrust in the forward direction say if that forward direction say is nothing but the direction of our motion then if you hold or say if you fix that particular setup rigidly to our aircraft then the aircraft will also move with a thrust 3 right will also experience thrust t in that particular direction right so later on we'll we'll again come back to that point right uh, so we'll solve an example about this particular momentum theory and then we'll get back to that how thrust is going to help us right so let's solve in a small example so this is our next example a4 Example number four in this particular in this introductory topic. So, consider the data of a brushless motor with propeller. on a bench right which was tested on a bench let us see tested on a bench right so so the data corresponds to slipstream measurements what are these measurements so p in the slipstream is equals to one atmosphere and v in the slipstream is identified as 20 meters per second right and this measurements are effective within an area of say 0 0.0707 meter square okay so these are the measure measurements here so what do you so what do you mean from this slipstream measurements so we have say a bldc motor brushless motor which is uh, rigidly mounted on a bench and we have a propeller right. we have a propeller here so this is mounted 
on a bench by means of an adapter. Right? Okay. Uh, this is the bench, and we have a propeller here mounted on this motor, and so when the propeller is operated, when this pre-LDC motor is operated, the propeller rotates, due to which there are there like there is change in downstream conditions here, right? And it is identified at a far downstream. So say, let us say this is my particular location at which P is equals to one atmosphere that is measured here, and then V is equals to so static pressure here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and V infinity is equals to twenty meters per second, right? 20 meters per second. And the corresponding area of effectiveness, effectiveness is about 0 0.707 meter square. Okay, now what do we need to find? So find the thrust generated by the motor. And so first one, find the thrust generated by the motor and propeller combination. So when we have these measurements, what is the corresponding thrust generated by this motor and propeller combination? That's what we have to find. And the second one is what is change in total pressure due to this VLDC and propeller combination. And also power required to generate this thrust. Fine. So these are the three questions that we need to answer. Straightforward, right? So let's assume uh, the interference is negligible with the flow. So with this setup and all. So with this attachment and the rest of the setup, let's assume that they are not going to interfere with the flow here. Find the thrust generated by the motor and the propeller combination. So with this information, so V at this particular uh, station is about 20 meters per second. So what I can do is like we know the relationship between this V i and V, isn't it? So what is V i here? V i is uh, V or uh, V at this particular station is tw two times that of V i because the pressure is one atmosphere, right? So so V i is equals to ten meter per second, right? So V is twenty meters per second. So what V i is ten meters per second. Similarly, once we have this. I know what is A i times V i at this particular disk is equals to A times V i, A times V at this particular location. So, so area of disk and area of area at this section, let us say this section 2 in our case, right? So A 2, let us say this is, this is A 2 here. Right? So A 2 times this particular V 2 here or V infinity, whatever. So uh, V i, so what is A here? So V V i upon you know a a by two, right? A two by two. So two times a two, right? Isn't it? So V two is two uh, two V i. So it becomes two a two, which is what is the area here? So there is a small correction here. Let's let's consider this as zero point zero three five three meter square. 
So, what we have here is area is equals to 0 0.0707 meter square. So, this is the area of the disk, am I correct or not? So, if I have to gen know what is the thrust, please make this correction here. So, the area of this disk, uh, uh, this uh, stream tube at this particular location is equals to 0 0.0353 meter square. So, which is approximately, so here the using this relationships, so we we figured out that the area of disk is approximately 0 0.070 meter square. So, the thrust generated is equals to P R minus P L times the corresponding area, right. So, how can I get it? So, you can do this way or you can also, since you know what is V i, you can, right. You can use this, you, you use the thrust formula, but I am not doing that, you better do this. So, far ahead of this is equals to atmospheric pressure like, right, P infinity which is far ahead of this disk is equals to P L plus half rho V i square, is not it? So, P L is equals to P infinity minus half rho V i square. So, what is the value here? So, this is one atmosphere which is 1.01325. So, because far ahead of this disk is again one atmosphere and the velocity there is 0, right. 10 to the power of 5 Pascal minus 1.225 times 100. So, what I have here is 1.0. Similarly, I can find out what is the pressure on the right side of this. This is the pressure on the left side of the disk. And to the immediate right of the disk, what I have is P r plus half rho V i square is equals to P infinity at station 2 plus half rho V 2 square, which is let us say this is a, this is my station 2, right. So, what I have here is, so what is P r is equals to P infinity at station 2 is 1 atmosphere, is it? Then 1.01325 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 plus 0.5 times 1.225 times V2 square minus V i square. So, this is like 400 minus 100. So, the answer here is P r. So, the pressure on the right side of the disk, immediate right side of the disk is Pascal. Right. So, substituting these numbers, we can get the corresponding thrust, which is equals to, so 1.5 approx, 1.015, minus 1.0126 times 10 power 5 times 0 0.030, 0, uh, 0 0.707, right? 0 0.707. So, the thrust T is equals to which is 17.66 Newtons, which is close to 1.7 kg. This is a thrust generated by this particular engine, okay? So, this is the thrust generated by this engine and the corresponding power generated is equals to power required is equals to thrust times the velocity which is 176.6 watts. So, this is answer for the third question, this is answer for the first question, right. Am I correct? So, what is the change in the total pressure?
What is total pressure ahead of the disc? Right. Total pressure ahead of the disc is nothing but atmospheric pressure. Right? So, one atmosphere. And total pressure behind the disc is? PL plus half rho v square. Am I correct or not? You can see that PL, so PR plus, so PR, PR plus half rho v square. You can see the atmo, so pressure on the left side has dropped below the atmospheric pressure, isn't it? It's P infinity minus this particular quantity. And P on the right side, like it's like, yeah, P infinity plus the total, yeah, increase in the velocity is that P on the right side, right. So, this particular quantity is the total pressure on right side and this particular quantity is the total pressure on, so P, so P infinity is nothing but one atmosphere which is the total pressure on the left side, right. So, the change in the total pressure delta P naught is equal to P r minus P on the right side. P naught R minus P naught L, which is 1.015 1 times 10 power 5 plus 0 0.5 times 1.225 half rho V square, right? PL, PL, PR plus half rho V square. Half rho VI is 10 meters per second, 10 meters square minus 1 atmosphere. 1 atm, right. This is equals to 246.25 Pascal is a additional pressure that is added because of this particular disc. So, the power required to generate this thrust is close to 177 watts here, right. Okay, thank you.